Greetings friends, welcome to Sovereign Grace Doctrine. We thank you for taking time on your busy day to watch our videos and we pray that our studies and the Word of God be a blessing to those who are following along. We pray also that you might give us a like. The more people like the videos, the more they're opened up to others, the more that Facebook helps others to see them. Friends, we believe that the preaching and teaching of the Word of God is needful for this nation, for the world. That's why we're doing this. We want people to hear the gospel. We want God's people to hear the truth of God's Word taught unto them and set before them. That we stand for that which is right and oppose that which is wrong. We are continuing to study here in the 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians. We will begin here to read down to where we're at. Here again, my friends, he says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples. To the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day, three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for ensamples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man, that God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. My friends, we are in perilous times. There's trouble on every hand in this great nation of ours, not just here but around the world. The leaders of the nations conspire against God and His anointed. They are working, doing all they can. Yes, in some areas of the world you can see, well, it's other people of other religions, even Islam itself that's worked its way into Europe and now they have leaders of that Islamic belief who are destroying and pulling their nations away from the true and living God. But the people have lost their faith. Or we might even say that the generation of faith is dying off and that the young generations have not believed and trusted in the true and living God. We were speaking there last time in verse 11 where he speaks about how that these things happened unto them for examples or examples and samples unto us and are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. My friends, we of faith can see it. We can see how the world is changing and how it's changed so drastically in a short time period of time just in these last few years and that the leaders in high positions are pushing it so and the money brokers the lenders those that control those that control the wells of money that corporations and businesses need to function are saying you've got to do this you've got to accept our new theology of governance and allow whatsoever people desire in their hearts, even to the point of hurting their children, and they're helpless, some of them are helpless, 
They either just got to write it off and, and give up their business altogether and go out of business or go along with this wickedness that is upon us in the days which we live. And an even greater shame is that we see many that are supposedly of faith who have gone way backwards, who have accepted this wholeheartedly. Oh, we've got to accept people as they are. We've got to love them. Friends, the love gospel has destroyed the faith. Or you might say, you could say this, it's corrupted the faith to the point where people don't know where they should stand. They no longer really understand what's right and what's wrong. They understand well, you cannot support evil and support God at the same time. The ends of the world have come upon us, my friends. But the Word of God is that which has been written unto us that we might know by the examples that are here in, Old Testament, New Testament alike, that we might know by this what thus saith the Lord, how that man and his wickedness have done ungodly things, how that God has dealt with them, even his own chosen nation of Israel, how that God dealt with them, how that God chastened them and reproved them, and yes, put some of them to death because of their wickedness. Why do calamities come upon nations and cities? people and individuals because of the wickedness of our hearts. Because of what we're allowing to happen in the days in which we live because as individuals, as communities, as cities, as nations, we're not rising up and saying, no, we'll not have this evil done in our day. We'll not allow it to be so. But we've all turned a blind eye to it. We're afraid to speak up. Because, well, we see some that are speaking up. And already we've lost the power to the point where they cannot publicly speak for long or they're, they're silenced. And, friends, we too may see ourselves affected like we're not very big. We've got uh, just a handful of people that watch us. So I don't really think we care what we say and do. But, friends, we're trying to warn those that would listen to us that we might understand the Word of God has been given to us. It's written down. We can have every bit of faith that we have the Word of God in that King James Bible and that we are in the days in which scoffers have come forth who scoff at the Word of God, that yea, even they doubt that we have the Word of God. Oh, there is no perfect Word of God for us to hold in our hands anymore. It's lost in antiquity. Friends, that's really where they stand. Do you really want to stand with those people? Do you want to hold the garbage in your hands that they call a Bible, which they themselves have no faith in it? Or would you not rather stand with the people of God that have stood for over 400, with it for over 400 years now and declared this is the ins preserved, inspired Word of God, it's the perfect Word of God that is perfect unto everlasting life to show us what we need to believe and know to be saved? And how to live for God acceptably in our days. And to know what is coming upon this world. Because we are in the times of the end of the world. The, the end of the world was upon them even then. They were in the last days. We still yet are. We're at the end of those last days. I firmly believe that we have less than, well, we're at 20, 20, what, 3 now? hard to imagine how far we've come as a nation. But I believe we have less than 20 years. Less than 20 years, my friends, before great tribulation begins. And we best be getting our hearts right with God. We best be deciding where, what we're willing to give up. Are we uh, willing to give up our faith and our belief in God to hold on to what we have in this life? Or are we going to be like Paul, count all that this world offers unto us is dumb for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus our Lord? Are we going to hold on to the things of God and hold on to faith and hold on to one another and to encourage one another, especially as we see the day of the Lord approaching? 
Friends, if you can't see that the day of the Lord is approaching, you're not spiritually minded. I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm saying you're not being spiritually minded. You've got one foot in both worlds. A Christian who's got a foot over into the cold water of the world and you like it there and you refuse to pull your foot out. You want to have a hand in things that are going on even though you ought not be because you can't glorify God holding on to things of the world. You can't please the world. You can't please mammon and God both. Friends, it's time for God's people to stand to be counted as faithful people. Christ said, well, I find faith when I come back. It's beginning to look more and more like he was right. There's very few nations upon the face of the earth right now that have more than 50% faith. Just about all of them have less than that. Even this, uh, this United States of ours is bordering upon it. And the things that some people, even those that claim to have faith, some of the things they're holding to and believing are contrary to the Word of God ideas and opinions that are taken up and held on to that are not supported by the Word of God. Or someone takes Scripture and twists it out of proportion and they certainly take it out of context and they twist it to say something that it doesn't. And part of the problem is that they use these modern translations as the Word of God and they're not. They're garbage. We heard J. Vernon McGee speak here the other day in one of his messages speaking about that thief on the cross. He said, oh, that thief didn't call him Lord. Friends, he lied. J. Vernon McGee lied when he said that. It's in the Greek. In the Greek, he called him Lord. It's taken out of modern Bibles. The doctrines are changed. Jesus Christ is both Lord and Christ. Lord and Messiah, our Savior. He's both. We have those in our day and time, and this here heresy of Armenianism has grown. You look at the historical records. Back in the days when Armenianism come on the scene, everyone declared it to be heresy. Everyone. And those who believed in the sovereign grace of God, what some today call Calvinism, those people didn't call it Calvinism, they called it Bible. Calvin didn't start it. He just happened to believe it. It was believed long before he ever come on the scene. All the other reformers, uh, pretty well all the other reformers believed it. The Baptists of those days and before believed it. Even before we were known as Baptists, as Anabaptists, we believed it. Sadly, some of us today don't. Some today that call themselves Baptists don't believe in the sovereignty of God. That eternal security of the believer. That God hath chosen a people before the foundation of the world for himself. We're in a falling away, my friends. We're in a falling away. We are those upon whom the ends of the world have come. Great destruction is coming, and we refuse to see it because we refuse to honor God for who he is. Oh, we'll not have him to rule over us. We're not call him Lord. Oh, we want him as Savior. But Lord, no, oh, no, we don't want him that way. You cannot separate the two. You cannot separate the two. He is Lord and Savior, both. And to those who refuse to acknowledge him as both, might as well just be saying, well, we will not obey you, God. We will not hearken unto you. But we will do what we want. That's as much as what we see of that seventh church in the book of uh, the letter of Revelation, that they're going to do it their own way. We'll get our own way, Lord. Oh, you're deceiving yourselves if you think you can get it your way. Biggest problem in Christianity today is people want it their way. They want to have worship their way. They want to have music their way. Uh, they want to do all the contemporary things, modern things, even things that do not glorify God. The ends of the world are upon us, my friend. He says, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. My friends, we all better take heed. There's not a one of us that is safe from this here. That if we get in the flesh, we begin to think that we're sufficient in and of ourselves, lose sight of the teachings of the Word of God, let the, let the eye of desire 
begin to look upon the things of this life and things that others have and oh man they're so blessed they're, they have it so good and they're not really blessed are they oh no they're not those that are living in the depravity of this world may have more money than we have they may have a better life than we have they may have it so good it seems to us but yet they're so unthankful ungrateful never content, never truly happy, because every day they live with a the fear they're going to lose it. But yet we could be the most poorest, most broke, most deprived of the blessings of this world there are of a people and still yet be the most happiest because we have something far greater. And that's the salvation of the Lord, my friends. If you know Jesus and free pardon and forgiveness of sin, if you're truly born again, if you're truly saved, oh, how great a blessing that is. To know the Lord, to know Him as, G, as your Lord and your Savior, to know that He's Lord of your life, to know that these things, as they are here before us, as examples unto us of the judgment of God, the wrath of God, and yes, the examples of God's mercy that are before us in the Scripture, and knowing that these things have been taught and accepted before us and given unto the understanding given unto us of God himself that we might believe herein. Take heed, friend. Take heed, lest you fall. Don't put your faith in your strength and your ability. Don't put your faith in other men's ability to stand. Because if you, if you put your faith in someone standing, as soon as they are shaken, as soon as they slide and fall a little bit, you're going to be shaken too. Oh, my friends, not a one of us can stand except God help us and continue to help us and enable us to stand and keep the things which God has committed unto us in these days in which we live. Such trials and testings are going to come upon the world in the time leading up to great tribulation. We're already seeing them. The so-called pandemic, the plague of COVID that came upon the world, a, a manufactured event, a test run, to see how they could, how far they could push it, see how far they could push the people of this world to obey. Oh, there's a threat to your life and safety. Stay home. Don't get out of your house. Oh, well, you You've, you've tested for it. You've tested positive. You're, you're, we've got to imprison you. You're in house arrest. Don't you dare get out. Even though oh, you've got no signs whatsoever, we say you've got it. Oh, you can't walk by faith. You can't say, I believe God's with me and I, I'm perfectly fine. I have no symptoms whatsoever. Oh, no medical science is absolutely right. Yeah, medical science thinks there's more than two genders today also. Modern science has lost its mind. No common sense there anymore. And there hasn't been for a long time. But thanks be unto God that we know that he's with us. But we need to take heed, my friends. We need to take heed where we put our hope and assurance, our faith, that we don't begin to think that we are able in and of ourselves to stand against these things without the support and strength of God in our life and to think that we can go out in the world and stand on our own. We need one another. We need our churches. We need our local assemblies of God's people. We need to come together to strengthen and encourage one another, my friends, in these last days in which we're living. The ends of the world are upon us. Great tribulation is coming, and then a thousand-year reign of Christ. Yes, it's all set in order. It's all going to come to pass. You can't stop it. We just need to accept the fact that it is, that God's Word is as it says. He is going to bring these things to pass, and we need to live day by day as though it might be our last day on this earth, and bear witness to the gospel, to those round about us, warn people of sin that they need to repent and believe the gospel, that they need to stop thinking the evil way they think and to look to God and cry out unto Him. And He might have mercy upon them and save them from their wicked and evil ways. Oh, that God would turn us as a nation back to, to the way of righteousness. 
But I fear there's too few of us crying out. Too few. Sooner or later, it won't matter because God's going to take us out of the way. He's going to take us out of harm's way. Holy Spirit, who has been holding back the wickedness, is going to say, all right, God said, let her go. It's that time. It's time to let wickedness abound. And evil will abound in that great tribulation. The world's going to be deceived. But yet the assurance is still yet in that last bit of this age. Great tribulation. The assurance is that the elect of God will not be deceived by the Antichrist and those things. Oh, it don't matter what we want to think. You can deny that all you want. You can deny the election of God. You can deny the sovereignty of God. It don't change a thing. It's there. You can murmur against God all you want. You can scoff at it all you want. But it don't change the fact that God is faithful. Even though we're not, my friends, even though there are times we're unfaithful to God and we have sinful desires and thoughts, don't deny it. We all do. And at times we allow something to slip through and become a word that's spoken, become an action that's done, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. There's nothing that you can do or will do that is not common to man. In the way you think, in the way you desire, you're not alone in this, my friends. If you have fears and doubts, understand this, we all do. Because we know in and of ourselves, we cannot stop this evil. We in and of ourselves, by ourselves, cannot turn the world. But God can. If we would but cry out unto God, He would hear us. But I think too few of us truly are crying out. Too few of us hate the way things are. Too many of us that supposedly are believers are, hey, we're, you know, the, the love gospel. They've got people all turned around to where they're, they're... Friends, you cannot love evil. It's all oh, but people aren't evil. Yes, they are. And their ways are evil. Those that live in an immoral, ungodly lifestyle, it is an abomination unto God. And unless they repent and turn from it, they'll perish in it. And all the while, you're going along patting them on the back. Oh, I love you, brother. I love you. Just keep on. I love you. And you are apt to be there with them, too, in that hell when they come along looking for you and looking for the preachers that said they're all right in that condition they were in. That and other ungodly things which people have done and all so-called men of God say, Oh, it's good. You can go for it. Do what you want. And who are those? Are those that have convinced people that they were saved when they weren't. Oh, you repeated after me, you're good. You repeated this prayer, this pre-written down prayer, you repeated that after me, you're good now. One may read the statements upon a paper, or they may quote a message, they may quote a prayer, but if it's not something from their own heart, if it's not truly their heartfelt desire, it doesn't mean a thing. The ends of the world are upon us, my friends. And these things which we see people doing, they are common to man, they're common to a lost, undone, sinful man, and we all have those thoughts at times in our minds. Things that enter in that if we allow them to stay, they'll just fester and grow. But we need to cast them aside and dwell upon the Word of God. Let it be a light on our path. Let it shine that light under the wicked, under the on the wicked thoughts in the corners of our mind, and drive them away. Using the hope and assurance of Scripture to know that God is with us. God has saved us. We know that He is God and He He is able. And that even though we have these problems, it says God is faithful. Did you know that the gifts and calling are without repentance? That's what Scripture says. Our salvation and our calling unto God is without repentance. 
it was settled in heaven, the Word of God, settled in heaven, that's part of the Word of God. That God, who before the foundation of the world wrote down the names of every one of those that would be saved, not of their own accord, but of the accord of God, of the determination of God to save us, and he took an oath upon himself that he would do it, that he would accomplish it, and the assurance that God cannot lie, and that God swore that he would make it so, Oh, but some of you are ma uh, mockers and scoffers who, oh, will not accept that ideal of thinking. Condemn yourselves then. Speak against God and His Word. You're mockers. Scoffing at the very promises of God that God says He is faithful even though you're not. Deny those sinful thoughts that you have in your minds of wickedness. Oh, some of you are letting that hatred show forth at times. Oh, you think you're just having fun. Mocking at the other servants of the Lord who set before you righteous doctrine, righteous teaching of the Word of God, and you mock at it, and you make light of it, and you scoff at them, and you're doing it unto Christ even. You don't understand that. That's what's sad about it. Some of you brethren out there who want to hate on other brethren, you're doing it under Christ. But friends, whether we allow thoughts to enter in, whether we allow ourselves to commit those thoughts to outward actions, doing things we ought not, still yet God is faithful. He saved us. And we're not yet perfect. Take heed lest you take ye that think you stand, take heed lest you fall. Those thoughts in the deep corners of your mind that keep popping up from time to time. And the little things then that you allow to leak out, little words, little actions that grow into bigger things. And as children of God, you best be careful because Satan is luring you. He's tempting you. He's saying, oh, come on, come on. you got this far. You can go a little further. Oh, look what you've done so far. Oh, there's nothing, no great harm happened to you. Oh, go on and smoke some cigarettes. Go on and have a little alcohol. Go on out here and have a little pleasure in life. Satan has put many snares before you. He is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And yes, he is there. But my friends, I want to say to you this, that in the day of judgment, you don't find where Satan made me do it. No. Each and every one will bow their knee to God and honor his just and righteous judgment before them that are wicked because they did it of their own heart's desires, because they were willing to do it, they wanted to do it. And to us that are saved, that wood, hay, and stubble, it's burn up because we yielded to the flesh and did things we ought not. Yes, we do. Even fear and doubt that we allow to abide in our hearts and minds. We allow it. But friends, God is faithful. Oh, what great assurance that is. To know that God is faithful. And he said if we believe upon him, he will save us. And that, that even as Paul, we know in whom we have trusted, and the assurance is because we see it afar off in the end. We're going to be there with him. And that those old sinful thoughts and actions we have in our life cannot keep us away from, cannot take us away from. Friends, we're out of time again. I pray God bless and keep you. Please give us a like so that others might see these truths also.